Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Yesterday, I was listening to a great show, The Thundering Herd, hosted by Colin Cowherd on ESPN. And Cowherd had on his show, Bill Polian, right? In fact, it might have been a show from earlier in the week because I listened to the podcast. Bill Polian pointed out that he had a son on the Texas A&M coaching staff <clears throat> and that Polian himself was actually at the scrimmage where Johnny Manziel earned the starting quarterback position at Texas A&M. And Polian, this is before Manziel's workout this morning. Polian shocked Cowherd by pointing out that in his opinion, based on his own personal observation, he thought Johnny Manziel had the strongest arm of the big three quarterbacks available in this year's draft. Right? Blake Bortles, Teddy Bridgewater, Johnny Manziel. Right. According to Bill Polian, and this is a guy who, you know, was um, GM of the year. This is a guy who guided the Buffalo Bills to numerous Super Bowl appearances. Polian thought that there should be no question about Johnny Manziel's arm. Now, in deference to the Derek Carr crowd, I'll agree. Derek Carr might actually have the strongest arm in this year's draft. But I digress. Let's get back to Johnny Manziel. So today, at Manziel's Pro Day, Manziel went out and apparently showed the arm strength Polian was talking about. Apparently skeptics like NFL Network's Mike Mayock now feel that Manziel has arm strength at least on the level of Blake Bortles. Right? The questions about Johnny Manziel's arm strength have been answered. Now, with all due respect to Manziel's critics, and there are many, right? Merrill Hodge, Ron Jaworski, not big fans of Manziel, right? Merrill Hodge said that Manziel has bust written all over him, right? Greg Cosell broke down film and felt that Manziel ad-libbed a bit too much that he would need to sit down with Manziel and ask him, what were you thinking on this play when your primary receiver was open, your secondary receiver was open, and you still ran with the football, right? But I'm here to tell you that football's a business. Johnny Manziel is box office. Right? He has a better arm than Tim Tebow. He played in probably the toughest football conference in college football, the SEC. And understand his quarterback rating his first year was over 150. And his second year was over 170. Understand, in those two years, Manziel amassed 7,820 yards. He's never thrown for less than 3,706 yards in an SEC season. Also, in terms of his mobility, if Manziel were in the league right now, he would easily be in the top five in terms of mobile quarterbacks. Right? So... I understand that people are saying that mobile quarterbacks get hurt in the league. And they're pointing to Michael Vick, for example. Right? My point to you is Fran Tarkington had a very long career, was very successful, right? Very successful, and quite frankly, you know, moved a lot in the pocket. He would be mobile by even today's standards. 
The question with Manziel is, how does he use his mobility? Does he use his mobility in the pocket to buy time to make throws? Or does he view himself as just another halfback? Right? Let me say, let me answer the question. Will Johnny Manziel get picked in the first round? You've got to be kidding me. Of course this guy's going to get picked in the first round. Right? You're going to hear later today as reporters put their thoughts on paper and as the articles hit the internet, you're going to hear that Manziel was accurate and forceful on his pro day that he followed the script and he made all of the throws. All of the throws, right? With regard to height, right? People are going to question Manziel's height. What league are they following? Didn't Russell Wilson just win the Super Bowl? Didn't Drew Brees win the Super Bowl? How tall, really? was Steve Young. And if you're talking about a guy who's 5'11 or 6 feet, does the extra inch or two really matter? Is that going to allow you to look over the defensive lineman? You're going to have to create lanes, right? You're going to have to move around the pocket, whether you're 5'11 or whether you're 6'2, right? Let's not you know, get all hot and bothered over half an inch. I'll agree, Manziel's not 6'5 like Colin Kaepernick. Okay, fair enough. He's not looking over the defense. Fair enough. But that hasn't stopped him from averaging more than nine yards per attempt passing in his college career. Right, Polian also pointed out on the Rome Show that he knew firsthand that Johnny Manziel was a gym rat, that Manziel studies film, that Manziel has an excellent work ethic. Right, so don't get too distracted by these stories of Johnny Manziel signing autographs, doing this, that, and the other. He takes his craft very seriously. So let's look at the NFL draft. Let's pretend that Manziel actually slips a little bit in the draft. After all, there are many quarterbacks out there, right? Derek Carr, who I mentioned earlier, Bortles, Teddy Bridgewater, Manziel, right? If you need a quarterback, you have other choices in the first round of this draft. But do you really believe in your heart that a businessman like Jerry Jones in the state of Texas with a quarterback whose salary cap number is going to be $27 million next year, who is also one of the league's more mobile quarterbacks. In other words, Jerry's not afraid of having an athlete play the position. Do you really believe that the Dallas Cowboys at 16 are going to let a Texas Heisman Trophy winner with an above-average arm who simply put visually, is one of the most electrifying college players in recent memory to actually slip past the Cowboys when they pick number 16 in the draft? Let me let you in on another secret. When Johnny Manziel came out of high school, one of the teams that went hard after him were the Oregon Ducks. Chip Kelly's backyard. Now, I'm a big Nick Foles fan. I'm a Pac-12 guy. Nick Foles tore it up in the Pac-12. People don't realize that. Right? Foles was an excellent quarterback in college. Right? The point I'm making, though, is you're telling me that Chip Kelly, with the 22nd pick in the first round, knowing that Foles isn't that mobile, knowing that there is a space, in Chip Kelly's offense for a mobile quarterback. Wasn't Michael Vick the main quarterback at the beginning of last year for the Philadelphia Eagles? 
You're telling me Chip Kelly is going to look at Johnny Manziel and then look the other way and not have the Eagles pick him 22nd in this draft? Let me also point out, too, that we shouldn't be worried about finances because, of course, these players, keep in mind, the union just came about yesterday. These young players have no leverage. They're under a rookie salary cap. So even though in the real world, in a free market, Johnny Manziel might be too expensive for many teams, now every team can afford him. Why not have two quarterbacks? You're, you're going to pay Johnny Manziel $5 million or less next year. How many teams, including the Eagles, this past season needed to go to plan B at quarterback? Don't these quarterbacks get injured? Just ask a Washington Redskins fan about injured quarterbacks. They'll know all too well. In this league, with this level of injury, a player with this talent and this charisma is not going to slip out of the first round. Let me go one step further. Right? Because there are some outside-the-box thinkers in the National Football League. You remember when Bill Belichick had Tom Brady as his starting quarterback. You remember when he had Ryan Mallett as his backup. You would think he'd have the position completely covered. But yet the Patriots went out and signed Tim Tebow. Now Tebow didn't make the team in training camp. Right? Because Tebow, quite frankly, until that last game, didn't have a good camp. Right? But just understand, even a team with Tom Brady and Ryan Mallett was open to looking at a third quarterback with mobility. Right? Because Brady and Mallett are drop back passers. Bill Belichick's done it before. You're telling me, given Manziel's production, forget his box office, given the fact that in college, both years, he threw for more than 3,700 yards. Last year, he topped 4,100 yards. Given his victory over Alabama two years ago. By the way, look at his numbers from the last year against Alabama, the last game. Not bad. Right? You're telling me that Bill Belichick at number 29 in this draft is going to look the other way? Let's go one step further. The San Francisco 49ers, they seem set at quarterback for a long time. They have Colin Kaepernick. Right? But didn't they just pick up the quarterback from Jacksonville as a backup? Jim Harbaugh clearly is not afraid of having a mobile quarterback. You know what? Even mobile quarterbacks need backups, don't they? My point is, if the 49ers were open to the Jacksonville quarterback, why would Harbaugh look the other way and not draft really a possible franchise player in Johnny Manziel? Right? Isn't he in the division with Russell Wilson? Hasn't Harbaugh seen firsthand from his own quarterback and from Russell Wilson how mobility in the pocket helps? So, all of that said, I'm expecting Johnny Manziel to get drafted in the first round. I personally don't see Manziel making it to the bottom third of the first round. Right? You know, keep in mind, a lot of the people bad-mouthing Manziel in the NFL are doing so for strategic reasons. Right? You leak rumors, hope the guy slips to you. Right? Don't buy what you're hearing. This guy, from his freshman year, when he won the Heisman, has done nothing but produce. Right? Yes, he does. Ad lib at times. No question about it. But he's not Tim Tebow.
This guy has a gun. He has a stronger arm than Tebow. He doesn't have Tebow's windup. Let me tell you, too, he has rear accuracy when he's on the move. Right? The future of the league might not be with drop back passers. How exactly did Peyton Manning look in the Super Bowl? Right? The future of the league might be with these more mobile quarterbacks. Right? Guys who can move around the pocket. Guys who can buy time to get away from. Guys with Jadavian Clowney type speed coming off the edge. So, Merrill Hodge, Ron Jaworski, I have much respect for both of you guys. I'll continue to follow both of you guys. But Johnny Manziel is going to go in the first round of this draft, and he's going to go comfortably in the first round of this draft. In the next few days, after people review their notes of his pro day, don't be surprised if Manziel's stock doesn't rise significantly. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me point out, too, don't feel the need to limit your comments to Manziel. Talk about any aspect of the draft that you want to in the comment section to this video. Is Jadavian Clowney for real? Is Blake Bortles ready? Is Derek Carr ready? Teddy Bridgewater, is he big enough? Was his pro day a fluke? Right? Khalil Mack, guys who, you know, have literally burst into prominence at the combine. How high should they go? Let's talk about the NFL draft. Thanks for stopping by.